And so the first thing, I just want to say a few words about the UK-Rwanda Migration and Economic Development Partnership. Uh, but I just want to start by saying that the reason this all came about is because the asylum system is currently broken. Uh, too many people are losing their lives in the channel between the UK and France and people smugglers are profiting off the misery of vulnerable people. Both the governments of the UK and Rwanda believe that that problem cannot persist, that we need to find solutions, we need to find new and innovative ways of tackling that problem, because doing nothing is not an option. That's why over nine months, uh, the governments of the UK and Rwanda were discussing how we would find those solutions, about what ways we could uh, find that would protect people, that would offer them hope and opportunity to rebuild build their lives, but that would also break the business model of those pig people smugglers, uh, because we don't want to see that kind of criminality continue. Um, both sides, when reaching this agreement, are fully focused on the need to meet all national and international legal obligations to ensure that anybody who is transferred under this uh, agreement receives the care and the services that they require, um, and there will be funding in order to support that. But we also realize that for this uh, partnership to work, there also have to be benefits for the people of Rwanda and for Rwanda as a, a country. Um, to help integrate the asylum seekers who may relocate and may rebuild their lives here, but also to help build the human capital, the skills, the job opportunities in Rwanda that will allow uh, these people to be absorbed. And we have seen in the past some excellent examples of Rwanda's hospitality to refugees and to migrants, and we want to help and support that process and work very closely with our partners in the government of Rwanda to do so. This is a partnership between two equals. We have talked together about how we can deal with this problem, how we can make it better. And this solution is something that we have come up with jointly. So I think it is a real partnership between the two countries. Uh, the UK will continue to do our part in terms of welcoming asylum seekers and, and genuine refugees. And we have done so uh, recently with Afghans, with Ukrainians, with Syrians and with others. And that will continue. Uh, but this is another way of sharing the burden and of ensuring that we break the business model of the people smugglers, because at the moment they are holding the sort of carrot of getting to the UK as something that tempts vulnerable people into taking really dangerous journeys where they're losing their lives in the Channel or the Mediterranean, and that bit can't go on. So we want to make sure that that stops while also giving genuine asylum seekers a real opportunity to rebuild their lives, and that's what Rwanda is going to offer them. This partnership is new and it's innovative. It's not been done before. So I don't think it's surprising that there are people who have concerns, criticisms about it. Uh, I think what both my government and the government of Rwanda feel confident about is that we've developed a partnership that is legal, that respects all our obligations, that ensures we treat vulnerable people correctly, that they're given ac access to all their rights and so on. So I think we feel confident that this is something that we can uh, take forward. I think those uh, criticisms and challenges we'll continue to deal with. You've seen many responses, including, for example, joint articles by the Honorable Foreign Minister Baruta here and the Home Secretary Priti Patel in the UK, setting out why we're doing this, how it fulfills our obligations. So I think we will continue to attempt to explain this and to show the rationale. But I think also once it gets started, people will see a different side of it. They will see how it works, because at the moment they are asking questions about things that haven't yet happened. On the situation of the economy, uh, that's precisely why this is a two-part partnership. It's the migration partnership, but it's also the economic development partnership. Uh, so through this uh, agreement, the UK will be putting in significant funding to help tackle the imbalances of human capital that we see between the West and, uh, and Africa, where we're looking to help create jobs, to create skills and enterprise here in Rwanda. Um, and we've already announced that that will be through an initial £120 million to support that process. And as the, the partnership develops, that, that may change. But that money is specifically to help 
tackle those, uh, those issues that you're talking about and to ensure that relocated people have genuine opportunities to find jobs and build their lives here. In terms of the asylum seekers that are, are going to be sent here, the, the agreement and you, the memorandum of understanding between the UK and Rwanda is, is online, is public. It sets out the obligations that both sides expect of each other and we will both uh, live up to those. And that includes the protections that relocated individuals will enjoy, the, their access to lawyers uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, on the situation for LGBT individuals, um, it's true that in Rwanda there is no specific law that protects LGBT communities, but the constitution is very clear that it outlaws all discrimination against any individual based on their identity. So that includes LGBT uh, individuals. Um, unlike some of the other countries in the region, Rwanda does not outlaw uh, homosexuality and LGBT uh, individuals. And so I think that is a positive thing. We're also seeing here an increasing vibrancy and confidence of LGBT organizations, which I think is a positive thing. Um, that's not to say that the lives of LGBT people here are perfect, but they are not perfect in Europe. There is discrimination that, that may happen. Uh, but I think we have very clear protections in this agreement of the rights of anybody who is transferred here, whether they're LGBT or whether they're not, and the protections that they must get. Well, I totally reject the idea that uh, either we or the government of Rwanda is involved in human trading. Uh, this is about resettling genuine asylum seekers and giving them hope and opportunities in a new country. And, and Rwanda is offering that to people. And Rwanda has offered that to many, many people in the, in the past, you know, including from neighboring countries and so on. And I think it's also worth remembering, as you, you will know better than I, that many individuals in the government of Rwanda have had personal experience of what it is like to live uh, as a refugee. And so I think they have been very focused on thinking about how do you uh, help people in that situation? How do you stop them dying in the channel? How do you stop them falling victim to criminals? And so that's where this, this partnership comes from. Um, and in terms of the sort of the, the situation in Rwanda, I think this economic development partnership will help tackle some of those problems because it is a very significant investment into human capital here in Rwanda to helping to create jobs and opportunities. So I think over the course of this uh, agreement that we will we will see that funding uh, being put to good use to help both the integration of asylum seekers and Rwandan host communities. Um, in terms of timelines, I don't have an exact date to to give you. We would like it to happen relatively soon to begin, um, but it will be a gradual process over time, um, and it will depend also on whether there is legal challenge in the UK, and that that will be dealt with. But we would like it to help uh, to happen quite soon. Um, but the reason that we have agreed uh, this partnership is that we have confidence that people who are relocated to Rwanda will have their rights respected and that they will be given access to healthcare, to accommodation, to legal services. That is all included in the agreement. So, and we have confidence in the government of Rwanda to deliver that. And I think for both sides, the reason that we decided to work together on this is because we see the loss of life of people who are trying to make these dangerous crossings as something that can't be allowed to continue. We also see that you know, criminal gangs that are organizing this people smuggling, people trafficking are benefiting from the desperation of vulnerable people. So both the UK and Rwanda want to change that situation. And because we share the, that value and that approach to wanting to fix this system, that's why we, we decided to work together. Uh, in terms of what Rwanda uh, might benefit, I mean, I think their welcoming of refugees is something being offered as a, as a humanitarian gesture. But I also think that the economic development partnership that we've agreed will help not just integrate the refugees, but also help uh, Rwandan population to develop skills, to build greater job opportunities and so on, uh, which is why it's sort of the other element of this partnership. And I think also, you know, Many uh, refugees who have set up lives in other countries contribute to their societies. I mean, the UK will continue to, rec to welcome uh, our share of uh, asylum seekers and refugees. And we see that over the long term, they contribute to their societies. And I would expect uh, that to happen to those individuals who are in Rwanda too.